All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is July 16th, 2023, and I am getting started right on the button at 9 p.m. A little bit later than usual, but as you guys know, family dinner on Sundays. There's 10 of us now. My son's girlfriend, a good Christian girl as well. So that makes 11 at most dinners. And tonight was at my uh, my brother and sister-in-law's. And uh, yeah, as usual, just a good family dinner and chatting and sharing and laughing and doing what families do. <coughs> so when my videos are on Sunday, they tend to start a little bit later. For most of you, it's not a big deal because you're not watching till tomorrow anyways. Um, but yeah, that's that's my Sunday. That's what was happening. And today, guys, I was actually planning until about, I guess it was last night some point, when our brother Roy had shared a video with me. And many of you guys know I've shared about um, Nelson Walters, uh, a pastor on YouTube, and I, he's got a church and everything else as well. And uh, man, I've been trying to share and get through to that guy for so long to reveal the Gospels and the 14 years. And man, I just don't hear back from any of these guys. You know, I, I, I pray to one day very soon, but Tom is ticking away as we know, right? And um, anyways, I, I've spoken about him a number of times because he sees so many things so well that and, and some of them, he sees them really well, but he's just like a little click difference away. And, you know, for example, like what we're going to talk about in one piece today is, is, is more confirmation about the time of trumpets. You know, we know that that's not the beginning of tribulation because it's going to be the 50 days that comes first. But the official tribulation, as we know, it's quote unquote technically starts 50 days before absolutely millions of people vanish and everything else but we know the 14 years begins at the red horse rider we know as we've shown in the last video and how we just broke that sucker down to be able to show what it means at the end of mark's discourse at the end or at the the time when the lord's returning at the end of mark's discourse and in matthew's discourse we know it's at the end, after six years of seals, after six years of trumpets, and that day right after is the Feast of Trumpets to start the seventh year of seals, and then when he returns feet down to start the seventh year of, of, of tribulation trumpets, again, also at the Feast of Trumpets. Well, this is going to give us even more evidence of that. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're going to add a new nugget. Our, our, our brother Roy had shared it with me to show another confirmation in, in relation to trumpets. But as he, he and, and Nelson has shorter videos, he'll do some shorter ones that are about 15 minutes. And <laughs> good luck, that ain't coming from me, guys. And uh, he, right near the end, he said something that I had never heard before. And then he says, you know, click on the link. And I, I clicked on this other link that took me. So the video that we're going to see a little bit later is about from about 10 months ago. And the other one's a little over four years ago. And there was something in it I had never heard before. But when you see where it fits in the timeline, you're going to say, of course it does. And you know why you're going to say, of course it does? Because you have understood the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of the is to come that has been revealed here for some reason chosen through this ministry and those within us building it and working together and seeking him out in it have been so blessed to receive. You're going to see something that is directly related to the time we talk about can only fit in that year. And when you see where it fits, wait till you hear what it means. It means everything we were talking about in the last video, which is the absolute evidence on top of the evidence, on top of the evidence, all from scripture, that yes, indeed, the 14 years will begin at the Feast of Trumpets. 
We pray that we have understood it this year, and I believe it wholeheartedly with the revelation of the Shemitahs and everything else, but we also have the revelation of a period of time called the above, or 50 days that comes before those 14 years, which we know begins at the Red Horse Rider. Well, this is going to be another confirmation. We've shared on it a number of times. I'm going to share some, some clips from Nelson Walters talking on these things, but we don't need to go into all of it. I'll, I'll walk you through and talk you through some of it, but we, we don't want to go into some of the things that he talks about because you're going to see, as I'm going to explain at one point, um, I don't know if it's in my notes that I'm going to share that he says, but at one point, he talks about, you know, Jesus coming as lightning from one end unto the other and so forth, to which even though he knows there's one year before it ends and it's the Lord coming. This, you see, I told you, this guy, he has some understanding, right? He still thinks that the feet down is at the end. Well, uh, 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 sorry, that the, that the lightning from one unto the other is still at the end. We know what the truth is. We've got the revelation of the story, and this is going to prove it all out. And there's a reason why I called today's video Noah 2.0. We've covered it in the past. You've, you've heard me talk about, you know, scratching my head for quite a while, a few years back, because I knew from reading the, the account of Noah with the ark that there were two storylines going on. We've discussed this. Most of you guys, at least if you've been around for a little while, you know the two storylines that are built into the story of Noah and the ark from chapter seven to eight, we know it's an overall picture of the storyline of the end of days. And we also know it's the final year of tribulation. That's gonna be the, the, the basis of all of these things that we're gonna get into and talk about today because you're gonna find a new nugget. And when you hear it, you're gonna realize the only way it fits is if, you understand that if it ends and it starts and the middle is all Feast of Trumpets, so will this be. You'll see. All right. So with that, let's get going into some of these things. You know, because I, I often wonder, you know, when I was listening to uh, these two videos from Nelson and the one from uh, last year, about 10 months ago, he says, you know, I don't think it's this year, maybe another year or two or something like that. He had said maybe another couple of years. My big thing is when, when you begin to understand even like what Nelson talks about, and you guys can go look up these videos and watch them in whole, your own, your, on your own later. But what happens is not only with Nelson, but with everybody. How is everybody in a seven year window of tribulation where's the shemitah cycle where's the shemitah cycle do you know that if you believe tribulation is seven years long it's got to begin at the start of a new cycle just like if you believe it's 14 years long which is the truth of seven years of seals and trumpets it must begin at a new cycle. So I wonder what, what everybody must think when Israel back here completed quote unquote 70 years, but people not understanding the count. You see what I'm saying? So with that out of the way, I mean, people shouldn't be looking till at least 2024 into 2025. Actually, this would have to complete. So they should actually be waiting till sometime in, uh, I think, 2025. If you want to follow a seven year cycle, right? Because the only other option left, and this was interesting because Nelson knows this. You see, he understands that the 70 in Daniel and speaking about a, the way he talks about it is a 70 Jubilee year cycle, meaning uh, uh, 70 jubilees, right, of, of Shemitah sevens. And so you would have to think, though, that that's going to end just like in the 70 years because 
It, what do we know in Daniel chapter 9? I'm going a little bit off course here, but I'm not going too far down this rabbit hole. We're still going back to the whole intro, okay? But when we come to Daniel 9 too, it says right here, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. We come down to Daniel 9, 24, and it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy city to finish uh, the transgressions, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniqui iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Well, if verse 2 said it was 70 years determined to complete it, to accomplish it, and we have 70 weeks are determined to finish these things, uh, aren't the 70 weeks 70 years? You see, in the end of days, it is a 70. And so my point in this is the 70 years of Jerusalem. You see, if you only believe in seven years and you're, you're a Nelson and everybody else in the world thinking only 70 years and the, the 70 is, of Israel came and went according to their understanding and, and there's nothing. And you know, there's only one 70 left. Wouldn't people really have to start thinking about 20, 36, 37? Where, where, else, where else could they possibly put the 70 being complete to accomplish these things? It would mean that they must start their seven years over here to, co to complete 70 there. I just find that an interesting question maybe to, <laughs> to bring up to people, right? So, you know, everybody that believes it's seven years and there's a Shemitah cycle and, you know, I don't mean people that don't follow and aren't seeking and searching. I mean those that are diligent, right? Maybe ask, you know, where, where is your Shemitah cycle? Where, where is the, the final seven years? Because obviously it has to start at a new seven-year cycle. That was just a side note I was pondering, you know. It makes me scratch my head because I... How could you think it's in two years or three more years or in four more years? There has to be a 70 that ends somewhere. And if you only believe in seven, well, guess what? You got seven more years to go. Unless you have the revelation. Oh, yes, here we come. The revelation of the 14 years and who the Gospels are speaking to that reveals it all. Come to this playlist right here or go to ministryrevealed.com. Go to the menu box. When you go to the menu box, click on intro. When you go to the intro, it's going to be this very similar. The, the main videos are the same right here of this playlist on YouTube, the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. Click on here and come to this playlist right here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in it. This intro video right here this first one that pops up is a 22 minute video that gives you a very brief overview of these next three videos which are the intro series right here all right you're going to see in this 30 minute bible study after the first intro you're going to see the beginning of the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to all these things that people who study scripture have questioned throughout centuries why does Luke say this? Mark and Matthew say this. Why is Jesus arrayed in a gorgeous robe in Luke, a purple one in, in Mark, and scarlet in Matthew? Were these guys colorblind? Why, why did, did Jesus in, in the discourses, in Luke's discourse, it says he's coming in a single cloud. In Mark, it says he's coming in the plural clouds. And in Matthew, it says in the plural clouds, but the word in actually means on in the Strong's Concordance. So you have in a single cloud, in the plural clouds, and on the clouds. It's incredible. What you're going to see is some amazing things, and you're going to understand that the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke of the Synoptic Gospels, Gospels because John stands on his own and reveals other things, you're going to see the big first is the last, and the last will be first. Matthew, Mark, Luke, in the end of days is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Pre, mid, and post, all three are true. They are all true. One is to Luke's group, one is to Mark's group, one is to Matthew's group. And you're going to understand 
that Luke in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant. That is the Gentile bride of Christ pre-trib that we are looking at beginning at towards the end of July this year. This year, when you understand the Shemitah cycles, and this Shemitah cycle goes all the way back to the birth of Jesus Christ, to when he began at, to be 30 at his baptism, to his death and resurrection in 33, to when Israel came into the land and the observance of it in Leviticus 19, to when Jerusalem was then captured, all of it in order, revealing where we are right here today. With exactly 14 years between them coming into the land and observing it the way the Father said, to them catch, capturing the rest of Jerusalem and completing 70 years. Remember, it has to all be accomplished at the end of 70 years. Hello. Yet it's going to start at a 70. Hello. Okay. These things you will begin to understand. And it's this, this revelation of the Gospels. And then you got to say, well, well, then who is Mark speaking to? Mark is speaking to the world, to, to the church that is asleep. They aren't prepared. They're not really in Christ. And it, it's the house of Israel with the Gentiles grafted in. That, who, that's who the tribulation of seals is for. Seven years of seals. And the mid-trib great multitude rapture happens in that seventh year of seals. Matthew's group, which is to the Jews, which most people knew, but never understood the differences within Luke and Mark to be able to distinguish where we should have actually been teaching from. Because we've all been taught from the Gospel of Matthew for hundreds of years. And in being taught like that, we've never understood the purpose of Luke and Mark. And so everybody only sees seven years of tribulation. Well, it turns out those seven years of Matthews are the seven years of trumpets. Yes, the temple will be rebuilt, but it won't be by Antichrist. It'll be because the Lord came at the end of the sixth seal, at the time of the rapture. Okay? At the start of the seventh year, rapture takes place, and the Lord is there, and the temple's being rebuilt. Antichrist isn't building it. Anyways, I am going off topic. You guys, you guys, you can go follow these videos, all right? And then you're going to see, so then you got to say, well, what happens to the beginning with Matthew, to, to the house of Judah? Destruction. The Lord has got to remove them from the land for seven years so that his land can rest. And he's only bringing a small remnant back into the land in the midst of seals. And only the foundation is going to get laid. The, temp the temple and the city and the walls will get rebuilt at the start of trumpets. It's absolutely incredible. <coughs> so this is what you're going to understand in these differences in the Gospels. And once you understand these differences in the Gospels and you go and read the discourses again, you're like, oh, my word. OK, Luke's discourse is completely different than the other two. And it only represents a 40 day period of time. There, there's 50 days before it all starts, but it represents a 40 day period of time with the Lord and so forth as a son of man. Then you've got Mark's, which is seven years of seals. Then you got Matthew's seven years of trumpets. But they all begin with a bang, with an attack, with destruction, World War III breaking out. And you're going to realize that the seven years that you thought it was is actually 14 years. And then you're going to panic. You're going to say, how is this possible? This guy is crazy. You need to watch this big video right here. It's all because of Matthew. Once you watch that and have a little bit of a foundation of understanding of who the Gospels are speaking to and the 14 years and above, you're going to understand why it's all Matthew's fault. And it's because we've all been taught from Matthew. You'll see that pre, mid, and post is all true. You'll see the discourses revealed in order throughout the tribulation, the end times, seven churches, all of it. All right? It is exciting. It is worth every moment of your time spent in it. I promise you. Okay? Now, with that, sip of coffee. Ooh, it's hot here tonight. Sip of coffee. And uh, I want to let you guys know, those who didn't know, uh, I mentioned it not to, uh, before I did it, actually, and I posted it in the forum. But I had mentioned 
that I was going to be on Tribulation Now Radio, which is um, on Blog Talk Radio. So if I remember, hopefully I will, I'm going to put this in the description box. I'll put the link in the description box under this video. And what you can do, if you want to listen to it, you can either click here or you can click here for play. If you're doing it on your phone, you can click on the image, but this area up here on your phone is going to show up below this image right here. And I didn't know how this was all being laid out. I just, I called in two minutes before it started and he said, all right, hello. We introduced each other and he said, bang, go. And <laughs> that was it. I'd never spoken to the guy before, except I knew they wanted me on to share. And then once you press play, you click. So you have to press play. I don't think it works otherwise. He won't let me click here. But press play and then you can skip his conversation, just news and events, or you can listen to it if you want to, and go to the one hour and five minute mark. And from the hour and five minute mark, I've got about an hour and 40 minutes where I'm talking and just flying through everything, relating it all, revealing it all out there. And, uh, you know, it's a great place to share. It reaches more people. And uh, you can always send some more people that way as well. All right, so this was the interview I did, or the conversation on uh, Blog Talk Radio that I did last Wednesday. Perfect. All right, so, oh, I don't want to close that because I want to remember. Now, here's something else. I thought this was uh, just great timing. Uh, in the form, so those that don't know, we have uh, in Ministry Revealed, you can go to ministryrevealed.com. Uh, here's some posts from our brother Steve over in Uganda, some of my posts, others' posts. And we have about, uh, I don't know, 1,150 or so people from around the world that are part of the forum. It's free. You can just click on the website and uh, join, click the forum in the description box or in the menu and take you a couple seconds to sign up and it's free. And um, when the reason why I first bring this up is because this was something that was shared in the forum, I think it was just yesterday. And I also reposted it because I thought it was a great share. So those who have never heard of her before, in fact, I don't even know what her name is, sorry. Uh, but the website is, is Sparrow Cloud 9. And she has these dreams and, you know, conversations with the Lord. And, you know, yes, I take these things with a grain of salt. But this one here, Dream 705, 10 minutes to get your houses in order. Uh, she says she received it June 4th, 2023. And she has a short dream. And then she has a longer dream. And it's about people breaking into this inherited house that she received, you know, they were bullying themselves in and doing all these changes and so forth. And she had to call the cops and come in. And then the Lord explains the dream to her. And and it was about what's happening right now. I know it's it was happening to me. I know it's happening to others. There are those who are coming into severe troubles and attacks. And and the enemy is just on people now like crazy. And we shouldn't expect any different. Now, we've got a more powerful protection right we have powerful protection we got the armies of angels fending off the enemy and we have to do our part we have to keep from sin we have to be watching praying be repentant right and i wanted to share this i'm not going to read it you guys can go into it i just gave you a quick overview to say we need to get our houses in order check whatever little pesky sins you might have in your life if you haven't repented for something get strengthened lift each other up pray for each other intercede where we can support where we can in this little time that we have left and let's help make this kingdom of god ready right let's be prepared because you know there's one thing we know very well about this right guys we know there's something coming something in luke chapter 21 and there shall be signs verse 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. Even before this perplexity, we're going to be gone. You see, when we come down here in verse 28, it says, and when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for redemption draws nigh. So where's the beginning? And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. That's the beginning. We shared in the, I shared it in the, in the blog talk radio. I've shared it, I think even in the last video, we've talked about it before. That's going to be the true Revelation 12.1 coming, okay? 
So how does this connect to getting your house in order? How does this connect to being praying and being ready? Well, one, everybody who's watching, people that are talking about Nibiru or this Planet X or a system coming in or something, at least they're prepared. I don't know if it's Planet X or Nibiru. I don't care what people call it. It's going to be the official, actual Revelation 12.1 event. We are going to see it. I do believe we are going to see it. And the escape, just like this, is shortly after it begins to be seen. But look what happens to people. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We of all people, because we're watching, because we're diligent, because we have revelation, we should be the last people that this affects. You following? We should be houses in order, ready, keeping away from sin, repenting if there's a little slip, but praying over it, get stronger to keep from it, so that we could be ready when we see this. Some hearts won't be ready for what's coming. There was a video shared today and the context was about this, but it was, it, was in, it was in a different section, if you will. But the context was this shaking that's coming. This sign in the sun, moon, and stars, Revelation 12.1. We need to be ready for it. We need to have our houses in order. And that's why this is a great little share. Don't make openings in sin to allow the enemy to weasel his way in. Be strong and ready, guys. How much time we got left? How difficult can it be? We're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11 days, maybe nine, 10. I think we can do it. And if we can do it for two, we can do it for four, we can do it for five, we can do it for 10. You see, let's get our houses in order. Guys, you'll remember that when I was, when I was reading this, it was, uh, it really struck me when I was reading it because it instantly brought me back to a piece of scripture I haven't shared in a long time. In 2 Kings 22. Oh, no, no, 2 Kings 20. And it was uh, 2 Kings 20, starting in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to, fa to pass afore Isaiah was gone out, uh, sorry, and it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day and thou shalt go unto the house of the Lord. Now listen to this. And I will add unto thy days. Here it is. 15 years. Sound familiar? How many years are left? 14 years and the 15th year, which is the final Jubilee. Hello. See how it's everywhere? Listen to what he says after those years. And I will deliver thee and thy city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Okay? 
There it is again, guys. Set your house in order. Because there's 15 years coming. We know it, guys. We know it quite well, don't we? So I thought that was a great little, let's get ready. Let's be strengthened. Let's not let this sign coming in this distress put us into a heart-failing panic when we see it. But let us be ready. Let us be strong in the Lord and not cower away for fear of what we might have done wrong. All right? I wanted to share this also. This, as I said, this is our forum at Ministry Revealed. And uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, buildings where they have churches in Uganda, where we're supporting with our brother Steve, the there was a uh, weather and it broke the roof down. So they actually had to rebuild, dig things up. They had some bricks that were donated uh, with a little bit of support that came in. And so if you guys are able to support, Please help support no matter how much time is left, because guess what? It ain't about us. It's about them. What, what about when the pre-trib escape happens? Right? Do you think maybe they'll have materials and people in there and they can gather together? Sure they will. All right. So that's another thing within the forum. Here we are watching and praying. I can't close that one. And here's something else I wanted to get into. It's just just as a side note. And there's a very interesting reason as to where I'm sh why I'm sharing this. This is something that had been in my mind, in the back of my mind for a little while now. And um, many don't agree with what I'm about to say. And some believe I could be right. I'm not saying I am right on this. I'm saying it's a personal belief in understanding through Scripture. And... You guys have heard me say in the past that whoever modern day uh, um, uh, Cyrus will be, uh, uh, when he comes on the scene, he's going to be this one to, to declare, to allow them to go back and to rebuild. Okay, When this destruction happens at the start of 50 and at the end of 50 days, at the beginning of the 14 years, there's going to be a decree made by a modern day Cyrus to allow them to go back and to rebuild, to which after they've been scattered, only a small portion of people are going to be brought back to allow to rebuild, of which we know only the foundation will be laid. Well, I still believe that Trump is probably that Cyrus. And as you guys know, this will jar a lot of people, but I believe Kushner may... Okay, you get that? May be the Zerubbabel. I've been tracking him and, and what he's involved with behind the scenes and, and everything he's done to raise funds to, for Aramco Oil and the $2 trillion and, and for the valuation and all this money and these things that he's raising behind the scenes because he wants to get that temple built just like his father-in-law. So my issue in all of this, though, and why I'm bringing this piece up is elections aren't until the end of 2024, right? You know, whoever wins wouldn't take power until the beginning of 2025. Well, that is well into tribulation, guys. It's going to begin this year. Even if you wanted to give it another year, which is impossible because of the seven-year cycles, hello? If you went one more seven-year cycle, well, then he, Trump would be out of power anyways. You see what I'm saying? But yet, you go to 2025, you're already a, a cycle, a year and a half into the new cycle. That doesn't compute either. So I've been wondering in the background for a little while now, how does Trump, if it is Trump, how does he become the modern-day Cyrus as the new ruler when Biden's there or whoever's behind Biden and, Biden and so forth. It's something I've been wondering for a while. Well, lo and behold, this video was shared today and it's talking about the troops and, the, and, and all the carnage that's taking place in Ukraine and part of a plan that was written about in the 80s or 90s. 
And then Stephen Benoon says this. Now, I don't have Patreon. I don't sign up for people's Patreon. I give everything for free, so I'm not signing up for anybody's for pay. But listen to what he says, and I wanted to just share this with you. And if you are with his Patreon, maybe you guys can go have a listen and let me know what he talks about. But have a listen to what he says here. You know, there's much more to what's going on. And even as we talk about Planet X um, uh, incoming, and uh, I had heard before already that it'd be the Southern Hemisphere is where you'd see it from. I think we shared that in times past. I don't remember for sure if we did or did not. Um, and I was also, one of the things I'll remind you about through the intel we'd shared early on about this system here is once you see it, it'll be too late. It'll oh, first of all, that's interesting too, right? This, this is precisely what we're talking about. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 25, is Revelation 12, 1. When this thing is seen, it's not too late, but yeah, it's too late. It's too late to leave. How about that? It means, it means it's too late to really go anywhere. Okay? This is what is coming. And this is what he's talking about. This is why I was saying earlier, Nibiru, some people call it or whatever they want to call it. Okay? So this is about the context of when this thing is seen really actually seen by the world. Listen to what he says. It'll be too late. Um, we did a video recently over on Patreon, why Trump would be coming into power. And I really think you should watch that video. Uh, it is in regards to Planet X. Uh, and the war it was, is, is supposed to, is, is part of the genocidal thing that they wanted to do. But the thing is, the elite can't get off the planet in time. Interesting, right? So it does get a little bit, you know, I don't know if you want to say bizarre or if you, if you track that type of conspiracy where he says that the elites, there's a base on the moon and, and they would all want to be trying to get, to get off to go to the moon. But when Planet X is seen or Nibiru or Revelation 12.1, the actual event, Luke 21, 25 is seen, it's too late. There's no going, okay? And it's already difficult enough to get to. But what I had never heard somebody talk about before was the connection to that and Trump coming back into power. I find that absolutely fascinating because I do believe he is the modern day Cyrus, not the one that he already was that they were trying to get him to be, but will become the actual modern day Cyrus and modern day Zerubbabel will be, I believe, Jared Kushner, the two working for decades to actually put together the rebuilding of the temple. They're not going to accomplish it all. That will be by the Lord with Zerubbabel when Trumpets comes. All right? But if anybody has info on that, please uh, let me know about it or if there's some way to share it, uh, that'd be great. But at very least, maybe you can just give me a little bit more info because I find that very, very interesting. All right. So now... As we get going further into this, the focus is going to be building on this revelation, this confirmation of scripture that we've been able to now prove that the day and hour no one knows at the end of the sixth year of seals, which means it starts at trumpets, and the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which means the seventh year starts at the Feast of Trumpets, the day and hour no one knows is hammered down. We've got it. But let's see if we can add a little bit more to it. Let's see if we can really know that we've got this nailed down. Okay? Here we are right here. We know this is the, the seventh Sabbath. This begins the 50-day count. That'll take you to the 50 days and bang! True Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the 14 years. Now, what does this mean to somebody who's new? Somebody's new or newer to the ministry? We know that there's this portion of time that we've shared many times called above. And I, I'm, I'm opening with this portion because we're going to be going into the two portions that Noah reveals in the story of the ark and give the, the final piece of the puzzle, if you will, that takes us right to the end. And there's always a piece that's above. Let me, let me show you something real quick. 
Let me show you something real quick. Look at Genesis chapter 7. In Genesis chapter 7, we know there was uh, for yet seven days, right? And then in verse 10, it came to pass after seven days. Well, when it starts, it says it's the second month, 17th day. Ah, second month, 17th day. You see, when what? When the fountain of the great deep and the waters were broken up and everything. Did that include the seven days that came first? No. It came to pass after seven days. It's pretty wild because you have a, a seven that's ended. You go to chapter eight, you've got another seven and a seven, but this one is only a specific portion. It's, it's interesting. We're going to talk about this deeper as we go into it, but I find it fascinating on its own that we know what that seven means in the big picture, but the fact that it's not part of the final year picture of the ark is also very important. So in the revelation of the end of days, we know that the 14 years begins after the anointing by the Holy Ghost of a new, what we call Acts 2.0. The following day, bam, Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed, and that begins World War III. We can prove this by the discourses. But when you come into the, the book of Revelation and you go to the seals, we see one of the seals is open. We know it's the red horse rider. A bow and a crown is given unto him, conquer and conquer. We have proven unequivocally that this is the Son of Man coming, as we've known, for 40 days in the 50-day portion of time above the 14 years. Look what happens when you get to the red horse rider. Second seal was open, the red horse was out, and power was given unto him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. Well, what just happened? The Holy Ghost anointed, and then this sword is furbished, that he's given now the great sword. Bang, the Holy Ghost is gone. The only ones left on the earth are the ones that received the anointing on the 50th day. Now the attack comes. And look at what it says, to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword, that they should kill one another. What does that mean? Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people against people, neighbor against neighbor, and it begins at Jerusalem. So how do you know that this is actually the quote unquote beginning of the 14 years? Well, we know it, for one, by going into Luke chapter 21. In Luke 21, we see in verse 10, it says, Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay? Then great earthquake, so forth. And then he says what? But before. Before. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes, fearful sights, great signs before all of those things actually begin, something else is gonna start first. This is the period of the 40 to 50 days that is a, above the 14 years. You see, he talks about nation against nation and the earthquakes, but then he comes in verse 12 of Luke 21 and says, hold on a second, before that even happens, this is going to take place. When you go to Mark and Matthew's discourse, let's go to Mark's. Mark's is the beginning of the first seven years, okay? The beginning of the 14 years of tribulation. And what does Mark say? No, then he said unto them. There's no uh, uh, but first. There's no hold on a second. There's no but before these things. It's for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, right? There shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves or counsel, they'll take you up, be beaten and so forth. Where does it start? The tribulation starts at nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But when you go to Revelation, that's not till the red horse rider. 
You see, it, it's not it's not the easiest thing to catch right away. Because you see the white horse rider and you see the first seal and, and you see that things are obviously going on. You see, but the issue is people have never been able to understand that it's not not only not seven years, it's not only that even if you believed in seven years, you, you don't realize there's a, a portion above it. There, there's a 50 day peace that comes first. The whole world has been told that the, that the Lord doesn't return until he comes feet down and they all think it's at the end of seven years. But that's never been how the Lord works. Six days, seventh rest. Six years, seventh rest. That seventh year is when the Lord comes in both the end of seals and the end of trumpets. But the end of trumpets is when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives, whereas the end of the six of seals, he comes on heavenly Mount Zion. That's the difference between the two. We've never been told that before. Nobody understands that the Lord is coming at the end of the sixth seal on heavenly Mount Zion, like we've shared in the last video and many others. They don't realize there's this difference. And you certainly can't if you only see seven years. But worse than that, they, they're not even realizing that that seventh year is actually when the Lord is here setting things in order, destroying the enemy, his, his, his wrath and everything else. You see? So how on earth are they supposed to reconcile the white horse rider in the understanding of it being the son of man who comes first? Who comes after the pre-trib escape, the seven-day wedding, bang, the white horse rider comes. There's no way to process that in an any end time understanding of seven years. Which is why there's going to be so much deception during the 40 days while the Son of Man is here, which we've been sharing a lot over the last few years. We know that he's going to be rejected during those 40 days of his. Because nobody remaining is expecting it except for his remnant workers. But nobody's going to believe them either. And the whole world of Muslims are going to be screaming, the Dajjal, the Dajjal. You see, this is the beginning of the 14 years. This is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man in the above portion. All right? So, and you'll see, there, there, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up in relation to Genesis and the story of the ark. Because for the longest time, as I, as I was saying in the beginning, I knew that there were two portions of revelation built into the revelation of Noah and the ark. You see, we know that the story of Genesis, we know that there's a big picture, right? So for anybody that's new, we know that there's a big picture in what we call chapters to years, the first 21 chapters, just like John's 21 chapters. There's a picture of pre, mid, post, and everything in it, all right? Well, we know that in John, uh, in Genesis chapter 7 into chapter 8, right? And we know it goes all the way to chapter 21. And what do we see in chapter 21, which is a picture of the seven easy years, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets, bang, the birth of Isaac. Right there, bang, birth of Isaac. When does Jesus come? At the beginning of the 14th year or the big picture, the, the beginning of the 21st year. But within these stories, there's pictures of the entirety of the 14 years. We've even shown it with um, uh, uh, Genesis 16, 17, and then 21, with when Abraham is 86, he has Ishmael, and then Ishmael's 13, Abraham's 99, God makes a covenant with them, and then bang, Abraham's 100, and, Ish and Isaac is born. 13 years, 
confirms the covenant. Bang, one more year. There's the birth. 13 years, 14th year, the Lord is there. So we know that within the stories, there's a big story and stories within those stories, just all throughout all of scripture. We've done this over and over and over again in so many places. And the story here within the ark is no different because one of the things that caught me was the two words differed from male and female. That was one, but there was another one. And that was 40 days and 40 nights and then having uh, 40 days only. Well, I, I, I don't get it. Why, why have the extra wording of saying 40 days and 40 nights? If, it, if it's just meant to be the same thing, then just say, whoops, then just say 40 days, right? Why not just keep it the same and say 40 days? 40 days and 40 nights, 40 days and 40 nights, 40 days. And then we go to Genesis 8, and it says when the 40 days were over. There's, there's, there's a separation of things that was going on in here. And we've known it for a long time. And you guys have heard me now for a while not talk about Genesis 7, verse 11 and 12. The reason is because I know that its application is not pre-trib. It's at the end. It's in the post. It's in the official story of Matthew 24 as it was in the days of Noah. It's not the relation to Luke chapter 17. Okay? Let me show you what I mean in this. In the overall picture, okay, when we see Genesis 7 and Genesis 8, and we're going to see it as an overall big picture, okay? What happens when you're looking back at something in the was or even in the is and, and, and have its understanding being revealed in the is to come? Well, we know things that played out over thousands will play out over much shorter periods of time and much more intensely. Okay, that's what's going on. It doesn't mean you take every single piece of every story and, and all of the dates of the whole way through and try to say, there's the story. You see, the days of Noah in Matthew 24 doesn't mean there's going to be a flood on the earth because he's not going to do that again, you see? It's going to be fire. There's not going to be an actual ark floating on the water. It's going to be a rescue in the place being torched. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to be exactly the same. And that, this is where discernment comes in once, you, once you're able to understand the period of time and how things play out within the Gospels in the, their revelation in the end of days. So look at what we see. We know from the story of Leah and Rachel with Jacob, the whole picture was 20 years. He worked seven, got nothing for it, but worked seven, bang, then he got Leah expecting Rachel. Then after the one week wedding, then he got Rachel, but he still had to work seven more years. After those seven years, then he had to work six more for the cattle, and what happened at the end of those 20? He made a covenant with his father-in-law. Well, this is what I was saying earlier. Even in the story there of, of Genesis, that the actual story of the end of days really is 777, 21 years, and then the final jubilee year, 22. But these are the easy Jacob seven years where he was working for his bride, and what happened at the end of those 70? Uh, uh, sorry, at the end of that first seven, he had a seven-day wedding, right? He had a seven-day wedding. And then what did he do? He worked seven more years to complete his work for having received Rachel. And then what happened? He had to work another six. And after that six, he made a covenant with his father-in-law for which he said, for which he said, I have been with you now 
20 years. 776. In relation to the end of days, what is it? Well, the seven easy is going to end with the escape. And then what do you got? 13 years to the, right? 13 years is the equivalent. So 20 or 13 is the equivalent to after those 20 years or after the 13 years, the Lord confirms that covenant in that final year. And here he is. He's here in that final year. What was the story with, with Abraham that I said a moment ago? Has, has Ishmael, 13 years later, God makes a covenant with him. Bang, who shows up? Isaac, the representation of Christ. What do you have? 13 years. Starts with Ishmael, who's a representation of, of the lion, Assad. And then, what do you get? 14th year. Bam. You see, the pictures are everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And so what was it with Leah and Rachel? He worked seven, right? He worked seven, and then he had what? A seven-day wedding. So look at what we get in the picture here in the story of the ark, where, where Genesis 7 and 8 are giving us a picture of the entire overall of the 21 years. Okay? Look at verse so, uh, Genesis 7, verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Then we come down to verse 9, no, verse 10. And it came to pass after seven days. Now, what's interesting is this seven, which is yet seven days, it's just about to start. And this seven, after seven days, they're talking about, of course, the same for seven days. When we go to Genesis 8, and we see in verse 10 and verse 12, and he stayed yet seven other days, and he stayed yet seven other days, they're not the same seven days. This is one set of seven. This is another set of seven. Only in Genesis 7 is the first one repeated twice. One saying it's about to start, and the other one saying after the seven are done. Well, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Why is it interesting? Because in the story of Jacob, we have the picture of him, and what did he do? He worked, he worked for her for seven years. And when he completed those seven years, he had to fulfill her week, which is a week of days, which is seven days for a wedding. So in this story, we have a duel of seven and seven. He completed a series of seven years, and now he needs to fulfill seven days. And after those seven days, he gets Rachel, for which he needs to serve another seven years. And when we go to chapter 31, we see that it was 20 years. Seven for Le uh, getting Leah, then seven for Rachel, and six for the cattle. You don't have a mention, though, of those seven days of the wedding that had to be complete before Rachel. You just get the picture of the seven and the seven and the six, which is the 20, which is a picture of the end of days, seven easy, and then 13 of seals and trumpets. And then the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. So why do you think there's this yet seven days and after seven days, and yet we know that there's a, a, a seven-year time frame that starts it all, that has to come close to an end, and there also has to be a seven-day wedding for a Gentile bride. Well, we know those answers too, don't we? I'm never going to pose that question to you if we don't know it. Of course we do, right? It's so incredible, guys, to be able to put this together, to see it and to understand it. Let's start in Luke chapter 14. In Luke chapter 14, we all know the wedding feast. 
Only Luke, well, Luke and Matthew have a parable of a wedding feast. Mark does not. We know Matthew's is the end of 14 years. We know Luke's is the portion above 14 years, right? So in that 50 day above portion, that starts it. And here's that wedding feast that we've talked about. That's the pre-trip. This is the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ gone at the beginning of 50 days. But only Luke's, not in Mark's, not in even Matthew's following his parable of the wedding, only Luke's has this great banquet. What is this great banquet? We all know that it's a banquet that he has with his remnant working disciples who will be his servants that will follow him for 40 days that will remain during seals. And we're already told, you guys all know this, you know who they are. They're the ones that he said, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he returns from the wedding. And when he knocketh, you may open unto him immediately. He's gonna what? He's gonna dine with them and serve them. That's that banquet that is after the seven day wedding, okay? Well, watch this. You guys will also know this. In Luke chapter 9, this is something we've broken down a number of times over the years. It was frustrating to find until we found it. But what do we know this is? And it, in Luke 9, 28, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings. What sayings? Well, a group that's not going to taste of death and the first thing they're going to see is the kingdom of God. That's only described like that here in Luke. Luke's is the only one that has about an eight days. Why is that important? Because we know what it means in the book of Revelation, right? You go to the end of the sixth seal to the start of the seventh when it's going to come, they see the Lord coming. And then he's here on Mount Zion at the trumpets to start the seventh year of seals. You go to Revelation chapter 11, you get to the end of the sixth trumpet, and at the seventh one, when it begins to sound, bang! Everything on heaven and earth is now the Lord's. He's seen coming from one end unto the other. Bang! At the Feast of Trumpets. So what was it? After six days, in a typology of years. What was it in Matthew? A typology of after six days as years in the two that we shared in the last video that we shared about being related to uh, um, uh, the transfiguration of Mark and Matthew as years, proving from the discourses that the day and hour no one knows is actually speaking about the Feast of Trumpets after six years to start the seventh of seals, after six years of trumpets to start the seventh year of trumpets. So what does it mean in relation to Luke chapter 9? And, and what does this relate to? How does it relate to the story in the ark? Because that's what we're talking about. Well, this came to pass about in eight days. I've been teaching now for a few years since it was finally, when it was first revealed, that this has a dual meaning. It has a dual meaning, just like the story in Genesis had a two conversations of the same seven days. And that's because one is a typology of the first seven easy years like Leah. And the other one is a typology of the seven day wedding that's going to happen in the 50 days, the first seven days of the 50 days before the 14 years start at the Red Horse Rider. You see, it, it plays both places. <clears throat> what is this about an eighth day? Well, what does it mean? Just like the days of a week in scripture, you have the seven days of a week. What is the first day of the next week? It's the eighth day. You see? It's another. It's a new beginning. Every every start of seals, the start of Trump, uh, the the start of the seven years, start of the seven years, they're all new beginnings. They're the eighth day. But what did Luke say? 
Well, if Mark's was after six days, which means years, and at Matthew's was after six days, which means years, then what do you think Mark's means, uh, sorry, Luke's means when it says about an eight days? That means it's not quite the start of the first year of the next seven. It, it, it's about, it, it's almost there. And what do we know is in that almost there portion of the seventh year before the 14 year starts? We know there's 50 days. How does that 50 day start? With the seven day wedding and the Lord returning what? To begin his 40 days as the Son of Man when? After seven days. You see, about an eighth day. So it has a dual meaning of being the about an eighth day when the Lord comes after the seven day wedding that started at the pre trib escape <coughs> and is also a picture of about an eighth year about to begin, which is this one, but not quite, which is why you have this strange wording about. Uh, approximately. Do you know, nobody can explain this, you know that? What I mean by that is, if you go and ask somebody to explain this difference in Luke compared to Mark and Matthew, they would all stare at you with deer in headlights because and say, well, it was just a, you know, a, a mistranslation or, or something. Or if they were true to themselves, they would say and true to scriptures. If they didn't know, they would say they don't know. It's a mystery we haven't yet understood. That's the mystery I'm sharing with you. <coughs> this one has a dual meaning, whereas the other two don't. And the reason it has a dual meaning is because its connection to the revelation of Genesis, yet seven days, which is a picture of years. And then it came to pass after seven days, which is the picture of what? What is after seven days? Leah's wedding, the, the, the Gentile bride wedding. What happens after the seven days? About an eighth day. Somewhere in that eighth day, approximately eighth day. When he comes at that time for the eighth day, what is it? What is the story about? It's about the 40 days, right? 40 days and 40 nights, or this one, 40 days. They're all now shut into the ark. Bang. And they're gone, right? They're shut into the ark. The, the wedding has now taken place. What is the picture of the 40 days? It is now the picture of of the Son of Man here for 40 days. You see, I didn't go into this one here because this one here relates to 40 days and 40 nights in, in a different wording than this one right here. But you realize they're the same one, right? Look at what it says. And the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, 17th day of the month, the same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Look if we come down here now. 17. The flood was 40 days upon the earth. The waters increased, bear up the earth, lift, lift up the ark. They're the same 40 days. It's not some different 40 days. Yet... For some strange reason, we have 40 days and 40 nights, and then over here just being told of 40, 40 days. And I knew from the understanding in the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to, that just like these two seven days have, have, a, have a dual meaning within them, one representing the years, one representing a seven day wedding, these 40 days have dual purpose as well. One of them is the relation to Christ coming for 40 days. And the other one is the relation to when Christ returns feet down on the Mount of Olives 
to begin the 14th year at the Feast of Trumpets in the year 2036. Okay? That'll be at the end of the 13 years. And you're going to see something pretty wild in this. <clears throat> because I want you to remember this count. Now, second month, 17th day. Does that mean that it's got to start on the second month, 17th day in the future? No. It's not every event on that day, same time, every year, starting it, ending it, here it is, there it is. No. It is typologies. It is pictures of what was and what is that shall both be in the end of days. Right? What is it in Isaiah? A little here, a little there. To build the picture, to be able to see it and to understand it. This picture right here is the picture of the beginning of the count for the picture of Matthew 24 in the final year. In the picture of, of the 14 years and above, we start with Yet seven days as years, and then after seven days as the picture of the seven-day wedding when he comes back from the seven-day wedding. When he comes back from the seven-day wedding, we know the Son of Man is represented by this period of time of 40 days. We know this from so many places, guys. We're not going to go into all of it. We know it from the story of Luke in order, which is Luke chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, which is pre-trib escape, 40 days of the Son of Man, when he returns at the sixth year of, at the end of the sixth year of seals, and when he returns at the end of the sixth year of trumpets. So what do you think we're going to find when we go into Luke chapter 2, but the birth of Christ, and what's the story of the birth of Christ? The 40 days of the Son of Man. And so if Luke chapter 4 in the revelation that we've got videos on of what it means for Luke in order and what the typology is of the pre-trib and, and Luke chapter 1 saying what? John circumcision on the eighth day. How about that? Weren't we just talking about an eight days after seven to the eighth day? That's Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 2 is what? 40 days. What are we talking about? Then the 40 days of the Son of Man on the eighth day. Well, how about that? You go to Luke chapter 3, and we've shown that it's a picture of him coming at the end of the sixth year of seals on heavenly Mount Zion, the story with John the Baptist and everything else. And then what happens when we go to Luke chapter 4, which is the final piece of what the, the revelation of Luke in order means when I say that, we know that Luke chapter 4 is a picture of when the Lord returns after the sixth year of trumpets when he comes feet down to begin the seventh year of trumpets. And look at how it starts. 40 days. Now, Luke generally always says only 40 days. But this 40 days is the picture of the 40 days and 40 nights that starts what? What do you think it starts? Who, who was in power? Satan says, everything was given to me in a period, in a moment in time. So in this picture of this event that happened in the was, it's a crystal clear picture of what's going to take place in the end. He'll be standing on the temple mount on the top of it saying, hey, this is all mine. Bow down to me and I'll give it all to you. It was given to me in a moment of time. And what ends up happening in this picture? Christ ends up getting the glor gets getting glorified, right? He gets all the glory. And we're going to come back to this. This is key to tonight. In Luke 4, 19, it says what? To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. Everybody was like, well, wait a second. Why did he close the book? He wasn't supposed to close the book. There was still more to the story. Do you know why he closed the book here? Because the, the actual revelation of this in the end of days is all about the final 
time, the final year of the Lord in that 14th year of trumpets. So there wasn't 40 days in chapter one of Luke. It wasn't in chapter three. It's not in chapter five, so all these. No, it was in chapter two and chapter four of Luke in order. And, and what's the picture of it? It's the picture of the after seven days, which means on the eighth day, like Luke chapter one with John's circumcision, and then the 40 days as the birth of Christ as a picture of him being here for 40 days as the son of man. What else do we have in this? Well, for those that don't know, in Luke chapter 11, we have a very, very highly, um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's really quite the thing. The story of Jonah. You even have Muslims pointing to this. You have people of, of atheists and everything that have seen and read scriptures and said, see, this is a crystal clear contradiction. And they've walked away and said, no, this is written by men. And the reason they do is because in Luke 11, 29 through 32 or 29 through 31 in Luke, we see the story of Jonah for which Jesus says in verse 30, for as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the son of man be to this generation. This means the final generation when you're reading that in the New Testament. What was he saying? What kind of sign was Jonah? Jonah was a 40 day sign prophesying and doing these things to 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 warn them, right? Jesus is saying he's going to be a 40 day sign as Jonah was. Jesus never fulfilled this. This has never been fulfilled yet. When you go to Matthew's story of the story of Jonah, it says he's going to be as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart, in the belly of the earth. Most people don't realize Jesus never fulfilled that. But because everybody reads from Matthew, they think Jesus was three days and three nights in the earth at his death, uh, at his crucifixion, but he wasn't. It wasn't even, the Jews will say, well, it was only portions of a day means a day. No, it doesn't. Because Matthew says three days and three nights. Hello. No portion of one or another. Full three days and a full three nights. So that's different than the one in Luke's. And it's very, very a big deal in the end of days. And we're not going into that today. I'm just showing the differences here. And when you go into Mark's, and this is where the, where the kerfuffle comes up. When you go to Mark's, it says, for the story of Jonah, no sign shall be given to them. And he got in the ship and he left. You see, that is one of the most obvious contradictions to so many people when they read scripture. How could Mark say actually nothing happened and the Lord just left. When in Matthew, he said this, and in Luke, he said he did this, or that he would do this. That's a contradiction. When you understand that revelation, everything starts to explode because it is all prophetic. The entire thing in all three of them is prophecy. And what this one is here about in Luke is the exact same thing from Luke chapter two, a picture of the son of man coming for 40 days. It is a picture of the story of the ark after seven on the eighth day when he begins his 40 days uh, as the son of man. He will be warning as Jonah did. He will be doing signs and wonders in Jerusalem and quite possibly around the world during those 40 days. And what's going to happen during this time? Is everybody going to be saying, ah, Jesus. Oh, Lord and Savior, thank you. Nope. The world's going to reject them. Because all of this, of this 40 days of the Son of Man, is all directly connected to what he tells them in Luke chapter 17. And this is something we're going to see a little bit further. It, starting in Luke 17, 24, he says, For as lightning lighteth out of one part under heaven and shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be, listen to this, in his day. 
Now, usually when I talk about this, I'm making a point for two verses later. And I always am in a sense, but today that's going to have even deeper meaning. Then he says in verse 25, but first, sound familiar? Sounds like Luke's, right? Sounds like, sounds like Luke chapter 21. But first, but before all these things. Okay. But first, why but first? Because he just finished telling them when he comes in his day. I want you to remember that. Remember this passage right here, this piece. In his day. Because you're going to learn something new or, or understand something more than you had in the past. This day that he's coming as lightning from one end unto the other, we know relates to the end of tribulation, right? Well, we say the end of tribulation, but where it really is, is at the end of what? 14 years of tribulation? No. It's at the end of 13 years of the total of tribulation. It's at the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is what? After six days from Matthew's, right? Transfiguration. That representation of the six years as trumpets. And then what? That would be what? The be Feast of Trumpets. That would be the Feast of Trumpets. Well, look at what the Lord says. Look at what the Lord says in Matthew chapter 24. Where is it? Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Do you know that that wording is not found in Mark's discourse? Do you know that that wording is not found in Luke's discourse? Where is it found? Lightning coming from one end unto the other at the coming of the Son of Man. And when is it going to be? Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So immediately after the sixth year of tribulation of trumpets portion, which will be, as we revealed in the last video, the start of the Feast of Trumpets on the day and hour no one knows, to start that 14th year, they're going to see him coming in his day, right? Coming in his day, just like Luke 17 said, that when he comes from lightning from one end to the other, it'll be in his day. It will be after that portion of the tribulation, and what happens at that point? Well, it's called the day and hour no one knows, which we revealed in the last video, which means the start of the seventh year of trumpets or the start of the 14th year of tribulation will begin at the feast of trumpets at the coming of the Lord that will be as it was in the days of Noah. So when. Is this going to be seen as lightning coming from one end to the other? In the 14th year of tribulation, in the seventh year of trumpets, where this is in Matthew 24, the lightning from one end unto the other is going to be seen before the days of Noah start. Hello. Did you catch that? Do you know how what this is connecting to? To avoid the confusion? So if you watch Nelson or something like I was saying earlier, let me show you what the opposite is. Okay? So in Luke chapter 17, what did it say? In Luke 17, starting in verse 24, it says, For as lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven and shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the coming, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be in his day. Verse 25 then says, But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Do you see the opposite? Oh, it looks like it's in order, like Matthew's, right? 
talks about lightning from one end to the other. Then it talks about the days of Noah. But this one said what? First, Luke 17, 25 says, this is going to come first before I come in my day as lightning from one end to the other. Which means this is the evidence. And even though we've taught on this and we know this, this is the evidence that this story is not the story that you're reading in Matthew 24. It is the lightning from one end unto the other from Matthew 24, verse 27, when the coming of the Son of Man is. But this story of as it was in the days of Noah is not. This but first, we can now prove from another verification in the fact that it says but first and Matthews says lightning from one end to the other and immediately after the tribulation of those days, then it's the days of Noah. This one is the evidence proving that everything we've taught on this, we've already known. That this but first is the reference as we have been teaching to this whole time is the actual picture of the Son of Man coming first for 40 days and being rejected. So it says, starting in verse 25, 25 through 27 of Luke 17, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Again, remember he's here for 40 days of this generation, like he said in Luke, in Luke uh, 11 with Jonah. It's a, it's a reference to the final generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. You see, here's a dead giveaway. Verse 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Well, do you think that all the way to the end of the 13th year of tribulation, they're going to keep eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and everything's normal until that final year of tribulation? Hell no. Of course not. That's because this picture from verse 25 through 27 is a reference to the above 14 years. It is the picture of Luke in order, chapter 2, 40 days of the Son of Man. It is a picture of to Luke 11, the days uh, as Jonah was a warning. It is a picture of Luke chapter 21, the but before all these. It's a picture of the story of the ark that after the first seven, as the years and as the days of the wedding typology, he is then coming for 40 days as it was in the days of Noah. You seeing that now? You guys following that? I know those of you who have been around for a while are like, yeah, we get it, Alan, we get it. Okay? But it's, it's a big deal. This, this, is, this is all that opening. We're still in the first, you know, 50 days. We're still in that first portion in the above. And all of that is still only connected to this picture we get in Genesis chapter 7. And then look what happens when we come to Genesis chapter 8. We come to Genesis chapter 8, and in the, in the uh, a little here, a little there, you don't take the entire storyline. We're looking at the big picture. You see, I want you to, again, you're going to see this later, why it's important. But I want you again to see something. This for yet seven days, and this it came to pass after seven days. They are a picture of the Leah, the Gentile bride, the first seven years, and also a picture of him being gone for seven days during the wedding. Absolutely perfectly there in order. And it's, it's, it's a big picture of Genesis 7 and 8, 
And it's the, it's the portion of the big picture of the overall story of the end of days in the story of the ark. But when we get to the Matthew 24, where the Lord is seen as lightning from one end unto the other, coming on the clouds, coming on to heavenly Mount Zion, and then it will be as it was in the days of Noah. That story is the beginning of the final year of tribulation, where the, the picture of the story of the ark plays out in a one year time frame, approximately, you'll see why, in a one year approximate time frame, where in the other view, it was a big picture of everything. So this is why when we get to the final year represented in Matthew 24, in the days of Noah, do you think it started with this yet seven and after seven? No, it starts right here. This actual count begins on what's called the second month, 17th day. It's not gonna be the second month, 17th day in the end of days, but the count is going to be the same. But the count doesn't include this seven. You see, it's another picture of what I was telling you the 40 days and 40 nights were compared to just saying 40 days. There, there was a reason for having two different ways of saying the exact same thing twice. Why doesn't the count include the seven days that came first before then giving us the date of when it all starts. Because there was a big picture story going on as well. There was, it was another way to see that there was a big picture being given to us in this end of days revelation of the story of the ark and also the Matthew picture of the final year. It's awesome. Look what happens when we come to chapter eight. And again, those who have been around for a while, you know this. In Genesis chapter eight, verse six, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days. What 40 days is this? This 40 days is the picture of the son of man here for 40 days. And when the 40 days come to an end, what happens? The Lord, uh, uh, right, Noah opens the window. And what do we know is left? Well, if those after seven days of the story of the ark is a picture of the seven day wedding that happened, which means it's the start of the 50 days at the pre tribus gate, there's the seven day wedding. And the after seven days is when the Lord is now here on the eighth day to begin his 40 days. That means there are three days left in the 50 days. Okay. So if we look at the calendar, and this is in an evening to evening, this is the beginning of 50 days. The escape happens. There's day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven which means somewhere in here, the Lord comes on the eighth day and he begins his 40 days for which is the banquet in Luke 14 after the wedding that he's gonna have with this remnant group, which is the Luke, 20, uh, the Luke uh, 12 group that he said to be girded about. And when he returns from the wedding, he's gonna sit with them, serve them and eat with them. He's gonna have a banquet with them to start his 40 days. Those 40 days will end. There's one, two, three. So the 40 days of the Son of Man will end somewhere around right here. It leaves one, two, three days to the end of 50 days, which is the year's end. At this point, who's now gone? The Holy Ghost comes at this point. The dove, the Holy Spirit comes and anoints this group in Acts 2.0 and is gone. 
What happened over here? The raven. The raven spirit is released. The raven, which means Arab from the color of its skin, the darker complexion. It means the word Arab. The raven gets sent out. What happens when the raven gets sent out during this time? Jerusalem is being compassed about. Jerusalem is being compassed about during those three days that are after the Son of Man has now returned to heaven. The 40 days are over and the raven goes out. And then the dove is sent out. You see that? There's the raven being sent out. And we know from Luke chapter 21. Let's see if I got it opened. We know from Luke chapter 21 that that story <clears throat> is right here. And it's completely different than Mark and Matthew's, which are the abominations of desolations we've shown many times, mid, mid seals and mid trumpets. This is part of the warning that the Son of Man gives. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. You see? Who's compassing with armies? Syria. It's all throughout Scripture. Syria, the king of the north. Syria, the lion. It's Syria, the Arab, coming from the north. Let them that be there flee, because this is the beginning of all things. See, these days, say, these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Does it, did it say day? No, it says days. We're not looking for the beginning that says days. We're looking at that, you know, remember that, that lightning from one end to the other? That's talking about his day that one's a much more specific day right this one are the days of all this vengeance of tribulation that's taken place this compassing about we have shared it from so many different angles and luke chapter 19 is another one of those great ones where this story is only spoken of in luke's gospel and it's when jesus weeps over jerusalem so what do we have the Son of Man here for 40 days. And during those 40 days, he's warning Jerusalem, weeping over Jerusalem, telling them in verse four, starting in verse 42, saying, If thou had known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes, for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation this story of course is only in luke's gospel and the purpose and the understanding and the reasoning for it being in luke's gospel is all because of exactly what you're reading here in Luke chapter 21 and the compassing of armies against Jerusalem, which we know comes from the warning of the Son of Man during the 40 days, just as he said, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, you get it? Then know that the desolation thereof is near. How near? In the revelation of the end of days, there are three days to go. What happens in those three days? Okay, the compassing about takes place. The son of man is gone. And those disciples that were following him for the 40 days, his remnant servers, what are they going to be? They're going to be waiting in the place of the Lord's choosing. I, I, according to scripture, even in Luke 24, only in Luke 24, yes, you got that right, only in Luke again, it says, will they go out from Jerusalem? This is the 50th day, and on the 50th day, the Holy Ghost gives them the anointing of Acts 2.0 right in the midst of the Feast of New Wine, 
And then what happens? They go out from Jerusalem, having been anointed by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the representation of who? The Holy Ghost is the representation of, you got it, the dove. The dove. So the raven goes out first, then the dove, three days later. And when he does, what happens? Well, we go to the red horse rider, and what does it say? Bang, peace is taken from the earth. Bang, the Holy Ghost is now gone. These guys have received what we call Acts 2.0, an incredible anointing with healing and power and authority and understanding being given. And then what happens? Bang. At true trumpets, day one or day two, whichever day it will be, true trumpets, feast of trumpets, Jerusalem is attacked by Syria. We've covered this story. This, this whole story that we're talking about now, from the yet seven days to the Son of Man's 40 days to the attack on Jerusalem, is the entire story we've been sharing for a long time now, well, this year, about Isaiah chapter 9. Because when the escape also happens at this time in here, when the escape happens, there's going to be a war, a short war in northern Israel. Okay? That's always a part less talked about, but that's going to happen as well. Okay? And then you've got the seven-day wedding. This is the time frame that that war is going to be taking place in northern Israel. Tel Aviv and Haifa destroyed. And then... They will, they will be some sort of settlement. It'll be a short-lived, it'll be a brief war. During this time, men's hearts are failing them as well, right? Because they're seeing the, I believe, meteors coming and breaking up and so forth. We don't know everywhere it hits, but it's going to be a panic. When that settles in that time, the Lord returns for 40 days. After that wedding, okay? All of this, which brings us to the 50th day and the dove right here, then the 14 years begins at the red horse rider. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, which happens after the but before all these things, which comes after verse 12, all listed in Luke chapter 21, which then takes you to then nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, which is where Mark and Matthew's discourses begin. So. Let's have a look and see what Genesis chapter 8 says about it. Genesis chapter 8, the dove is there. In verse 8, it says, Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had abated from off the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she was returned unto the ark. For the waters uh, uh, were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and he took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark okay 50 days comes the picture is the anointing of the holy ghost as our acts 2.0 and then <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the dove is now removed from the earth peace is taken from the earth and what did we say starts at the feast of trumpets for seven years of seals hello Seven years of seals. What happens after? Then he sends out the dove again. <clears throat> so here we are, seventh year of seals. He sends out the dove. And what does he do? The dove plucks off a branch. Remember the Gentiles are the, are the branch grafted in, right? The church grafted into the house of Israel. And what does he do? He plucks off a branch. What is the word pluck in Greek? There it is in Hebrew. What does it mean in Greek? It means harpazo, which is the word for rapture. And then what do we get? He stayed yet seven other days. What days do you think those are? You got it. They're the picture of now the seven years of days as years in trumpets. But you know what they're not? They're not the six. You see that? This doesn't take us to the end of the sixth year of trumpets. This, this story of seven days and seven days, because these two are two separate seven days, this doesn't bring us to the end of the, the 13th year or the end of the big picture 20th year, right? It doesn't take us to 
the 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 13th or the big picture 20th <clears throat> it actually takes us to the end of the 14th or the end of the 21st because look and he stayed yet seven other uh, other seven days and sent forth the dove which returned not again unto him anymore See, the dove never went back into the ark, never went back to heaven when the entirety of the 14 years or the big picture 21 years is over. So when, when that entire final 14th year, including that 14th year, is over, look at what we read. First year, first month, right? It's, it's the beginning of... I want you to pay attention to this. <laughs> You're going to freak out when you see this come together. Verse 13 says, And it came to pass in the 600th year, in the first year in the first month in the first day of the month the waters were dried up from the earth the what the waters were dried up from the earth let me highlight that the waters were dried up from the earth and noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold the face of the earth was dry and in the second month, 27th day of the month, was the earth dried. How long was that from when it began? Huh. Where did it start in Genesis chapter 7? Remember, the count didn't begin until after these seven days. And it began on the second month, 17th day. So we know the actual story. We're not looking for these seven because the count starts after those seven. What do we have? One year and 10 months. Uh, uh, sorry, one, sorry, one year and 10 days. One year and 10 days. Wait until you see how this connects. Let me show you something else for those who are new. Stayed seven days. So there's your start of what? <clears throat> well, that'd be your start of 14 years, right? There's your beginning at the Feast of Trumpets, the beginning of the 14 years, starting at the Feast of Trumpets, and it's going to be what? The attack on Jerusalem, and it's going to be what? The beginning of tribulation. Okay? Was it tribulation 50 days early at the pre-trib escape? Yes. White horse rider? Yes. Compassing about the dove? Yes. But at the red horse rider, when the attack takes place on Jerusalem, it's the beginning, the official beginning of tribulation, which is nation against nation, the tribulation. Look at this word stayed in verse 10 of Genesis 8. It's the Hebrew word 2342, and it means to whirl in pain, much pain, pain, sorrow, tremble. Look at this exact same word. In the exact same context, and he stayed yet seven other days, but look at what verse 12 says. It's actually the Hebrew word 3176, and it means exactly what you think it would, to wait, to be patient. Why on earth didn't the first one in verse 10 for stayed mean to wait and be patient? Because it's the beginning of tribulation. It's the beginning of tribulation. It even tells you, but only if you have the Strong's Concordance to go and look through the definition of that word. Do you understand if you don't have a program like this with concordance at your fingertips, you would have no reason to go and study the word stayed and the word stayed. If I did it like this, and I read it right here in verse 10, and he stayed yet seven other days. And I go to verse 12. And he stayed yet seven other days. You would have absolutely no reason to go and study that word to think there was any meaning to it. Except to wait and be patient. Yet lo and behold, this one starts with tribulation. And when does the tribulation start? At True Tishri 1, by the attack from Syria at nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. 
You see? This is what I was saying. For those that hadn't seen this before, <clears throat> this Genesis 7 into 8 is a big overview picture of the Leah, Rachel, Jacob, 20, 21 years. The, the, the story of Abraham in the first seven that aren't there, but just the, the, the seven of seals and six of trumpets, which is 13 years. And when he's 99 and Ishmael is 13, God makes a covenant, just like God made a covenant with Jacob after the 20 years, which is the equivalent of the 13. And then bam, 100 years, the start of the 14, Isaac is born. It's the entire story. But this one, in this final seven, doesn't take us to the return of the Lord. It takes us to the end of the 14 years. It takes us to the end of the 21 year big picture. You see, that story of the ark takes us to the end of the 14, takes us to the end of the big picture 21. And yet, that year representation, that final 14th year or 21st year, that final year is represented by the entirety of the story of chapter 7 to 8 of the story of the ark after the seven days. What is the after seven days? <clears throat> it's the picture of the beginning of the count, which is the second month, 17th day. When that year is over, it's the second month, 27th day. That final year of trumpets, of tribulation, that final 14th year, is one year and 10 days long. What? Have you been drinking, Al? Only coffee, brothers and sisters. Only coffees and drinking in the revelation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man. Because this stuff is awesome. This stuff is awesome. Did you notice something else? You have the seven days as years for seals, the seven days as years for trumpets, and there's no real story in between. But when we were at chapter seven, you had the seven as, as years, and then the after seven representing days, and then you've got the beginning of this count, the 40 days, which, which is like the seven days, and then the 40, and then the raven, and then the dove, and we get this entire picture of like the first seven years, a picture of the seven days and after seven days, like the wedding. We have the picture of the son of man that he said he would be but first as it was in the days of Noah as a picture of those 40 days. Then we got the picture of the raven, the antichrist spirit, that, that, that Assad, not necessarily antichrist, but that raven enemy spirit surrounding Jerusalem. Then you've got the dove of the anointing on the 50 days and bang, the attack starting the 14 years, which is the travailing and wreathing and whirling in pain. <clears throat> All of that happens. And yet, between these two, there's nothing. There's no, there's no additional count between this seven and this seven. There's no, there's no 50 day type count. There's no, <clears throat> there's no other count in it. Wasn't that interesting? Because we know before the 14 years begins, there's a period of 50 days. And it just so happens that from that portion of chapter seven until verse nine of chapter eight is a picture of the first seven. And the above portion being 50 days, which includes after seven days at the wedding, the 40 days of the Son of Man, the raven spirit going out, compassing them about, and then the dove. Do you know why? 
and yet none of that happens? There's no additional counts between these two sevens? Because it's all a picture of Luke. It is a picture of Luke's discourse. It's a picture of Luke chapter 17, where Jesus said, but first must I be rejected of this generation, being the final generation. They're all going to think he's the Dajjal, the Antichrist, because the whole world has been taught that Antichrist comes first. Because millions of people, tens of millions will have vanished, but the rest of the church that's left is going to say, well, it couldn't have been the rapture because I'm still here. Well, guess what? They're right. It wasn't the rapture. It was the pre-trib escape of those who were in Christ spirit-filled, and they're remaining because they're the not quite same as the ones in Christ, because they're now going to be preparing to go to paradise in the seventh year of seals, which you got it, is the part directly related to the plucked off olive branch, okay? Now, what, where else? Well, we see it also, let me show you this. We saw it in Isaiah chapter nine, of course, which we know really well, but do you realize we also see it in Daniel? We see it in Daniel chapter 9, <clears throat> in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. Well, hold on a second. That means Jerusalem must have been attacked and destroyed, right? Why would you get a, a decree to go back and to restore and to rebuild? unless there was an attack. This is the decree. We've taught on it many times. This is the decree that the modern day Cyrus is going to decree, which is why that timing of hearing uh, Stephen Bendenoon say that on Israeli News Live was a big deal for me. I never heard of a context with, with a connection to this Nibiru system or Revel what I would call Revelation 12.1 and Luke 21.25 I'd never known that there was a, an, an understanding out there of how and or why Trump could come back at that time. Well, it falls in line with everything that we've been revealing here in this ministry in relation to that timing of when that comes. That whoever modern day Cyrus is would be the one showing up at that time to make that decree. And who was the one that was giving us a little uh, a sign that he was? Well, the world was calling him Cyrus. He decreed that Jerusalem was their capital. He moved the, the embassy as, as a sign. Was it the actual Cyrus movement of the end of days? No, but it was a sign. You see? So how fitting to complete it. How fitting that he said Kushner is the perfect man because of his genius to be able to get this deal done to allow them to rebuild. The only problem is the Jews don't realize they're about to be destroyed first. And that's what this is telling us. You see? So what does this mean? This here, the first part of, of uh, Daniel 9.25 is clear that something happens above the 14 years that will include a decree to allow them to go back and rebuild. And what do we know about it? Well, of course, then we know what? Here it is right here. Unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. When we were talking about this earlier, what does this seven weeks mean? It means seven years. <coughs> Remember these 70 weeks? Was clearly given to us in verse two that he would accomplish 70 years in the, in the desolations of Jerusalem. And 70 weeks are determined to put a, to finish, to make an end up. It's the same thing. So what do you think seven weeks means? If 70 years is, is 70 weeks, then seven weeks is seven years. Comma, and. So what's happening during these seven weeks that are years being the seven years of seals? We know, remember, Jerusalem was destroyed. They're scattered. They're scattered. This is what you read all about for their disobedience in, in Leviticus 26. They've been scattered. And only a small group is going to be brought back to rebuild, but only the foundation is going to get built. There's going to be no wall, street, 
temple, none of that stuff until the first seven years of seals are done. That's why you have this comma and. This three score in two weeks, two weeks obviously is just like this is seven years, this is two years. And what would three score be? You see, it's a, it's, this is in the, there's no comma, which means they're clearly added together as one context. What's three score? Three score means 60. So what do you think 60 is? Actual weeks. That would be one year and about two months, right? So instead of always saying one year and two months, I say it's about a total of one year, two months, plus two more weeks, which is years. The total is about three years and two months. So I say about three and a half years. Okay, it'll be less. So you got seven years and about three and a half years. What happens during those three and a half years? Well, it says during those about three and a half years that the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And we know from Zechariah that the temple's being rebuilt. So you've got seven, about three and a half. What happens after those about three and a half? Messiah himself is cut off. The only way Messiah could be cut off if he was here on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of the first six years of seals, which we know he is. And he's here till what? He's here till about the midpoint of trumpets, about ten and a half years into tribulation, and he's cut off. We know then the people shall come, go after them with the flood, and until the end of the war. We know that this last two and a half years, which is the proper understanding, two and a half years of Daniel nine, uh, of Daniel twelve, verse seven. The we we know from Revelation twelve fourteen. That one, because it has an end between time and times, that one is the full three and a half final years of trumpets, whereas the one from Daniel chapter 12, verse 7, is two and a half of those three and a half years of the final ones. And why does Daniel chapter 12 only have two and a half instead of the final three and a half of trumpets? And that's because, here it is, Daniel 9, 27. In Daniel 9.27, we know that this is the Son of Man, as I've been sharing with you the whole way through, when the Son of Man returns as we saw as lightning from one end unto the other, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in his time from Matthew 24. The day and hour, no one knows. It'll be as it was in the days of Noah. This is this final week, which is what? One year. One year. Remember what Jesus was calling it? In, in Luke 17, when he comes as lightning from one end into the other, and it would be in his day? Well, that day, which is that final wrath, that day is also a year. Did you know that? That reference of his day is him also saying it's a year. This is it. And, and this is interesting, and I always found this really good that Nelson knows this too. He understands that Daniel 9.27 is the Lord himself here in that final year of tribulation. He only thinks it's seven, but he knows it's the final year of trumpets, of which I think he thinks there's only three and a half years of trumpets in a seven-year picture, right? So he knows that when you follow the story of... of um. A uh, 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 six days, seventh rest, six years, seventh rest. He knows that in a 49 year cycle of Shemitah years, the seventh year is always that year of rest for the land, right? It's always that year of rest. So he knows and has understood that this is not the Antichrist and dividing this into two separate parts as one week of seven years. No, it's the final year. This is the covenant. Remember what happened? Remember what happened? Jacob at the end of 20, he makes a covenant with his father-in-law. And it's the same as saying Abraham after 13 years, he makes a covenant with God, makes a covenant with him in his household. This is the same thing. Seven, about three and a half, two and a half, that's 13. Who is going to make this covenant and confirm this covenant in this final year? It's the Lord himself. We've taught on it many times. Which covenant is this? Well, it's the covenant 
that he made at the end of seals to the very beginning of trumpets that he had to break that we read in Zechariah 11 because he cut it off because Satan was cast down and the pit was opened in the 11th year in the midst of trumpets. That is why he's cut off and he goes after them with a the flood, Revelation 12, 14, and unto the end of the war, which is the two and a half year war with the two witnesses. And at the end of that war, which is what? The end of the sixth trumpet, which is the end of the sixth year of trumpets. And what's the seventh year of trumpets? The final year. He's going to now confirm the covenant that he had made seven years earlier with all people that you read about in Zechariah 11. So again, we see that there is this, this event, this above 14 years that happens before the 14 years for which in those 14, it's the Lord himself here coming to destroy all the abominations. See, how on earth do people think this is the Antichrist, right? And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, one year. And in the midst of that week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Wouldn't the Antichrist be the one making the sacrifices, like destroying, killing the Christians and everything? And for the overspreading of abominations. Well, who overspread the abominations? The Antichrist, the devil, right? Right, and Satan. He shall make it desolate. So, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. So whoever is the one that confirms this covenant is the one who's going to destroy all the abominations that took place. How on earth is that the Antichrist? Craziness, right? But you could see this picture again. 20 years or 13 years confirms the covenant, final year. So that means... In this story of the final year, okay, whether it's 20 or whether it's 13 of seals and to the end of the sixth year of trumpets, that means the Lord is here during that final year. That final year is going to be a year when it starts with him coming as lightning from one end unto the other in his day. And that day is a representation also of his year now beginning because that day is when he will be seen in his day. And when he is seen in that day, the final year begins because it's also a year. Oh, you're going to see this. Don't you worry. That means this final year is what? Well, in the 70 years of Jerusalem, it'll be the end of 70 years at the end of the 14th year, which means what? Shemitahs. How many sevens were there? 10. 10 sevens, right? <laughs> which means this seventh year is a Shemitah year just as a 70th in the cycle of seven years times 10 makes it a Shemitah year. It has to be a Shemitah year. And guess what? In the revelation of the Shemitah Sabbath year counts all the way back to Christ, it's precisely that, a Shemitah year. Why is it important? Because it's not any Shemitah year. It's the 40 ninth Shemitah year. It's the 49th Shemitah year. Do you know what happens? Do you know what happens? I didn't know this until yesterday afternoon. Do you know what happens in a year of the 49th in a Shemitah cycle? Do you know what happens once every Four, well, I guess every 50 years, that 49th year is longer than a typical year. Huh. It's longer than a typical year. And I'm about to break it down for you right here. It is awesome. 
Listen to this. Listen to this. This is the, the video that Roy had shared with me, but he wasn't sharing on this point. So it's always awesome when that happens too, right? You find more revelation hidden within it. And as much as Nelson Walters has some good on information, I really wanted to break all of this down for you so that you can have a better understanding. You can go back and rewind and watch and review and get greater clarity because I don't want you to be confused with some of the points in the way that Nelson shares them because they're not accurate. He has great, you know, I would say out of all of the pastors out there that teach on prophecy, Nelson Walters is my number one favorite. He is the most accurate in the ability of accuracy that you can have within a seven year thinking. If that makes sense, <laughs> even though it's it's still smashing things together and 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 half periods of time and no above portion and all that stuff. He sees pieces that we know are true and he's got them pretty much in the right area, a little bit wrong in context, but he can still see them. That's why I would love to have had the opportunity to share and to just chat with him because this would blow his mind. It, he would, it would all start to click on these things where he knows there's still details that, that aren't jiving, but he knows that are there. And so that's what this video is about, re revealing and making known these details and adding more insight to a new revelation to me revealed through one that he understood but not fully properly yet there all right in its context and i don't want you to get confused if you do watch his videos on it and remember how we've shared it here and then go watch if you want and you'll see these little nuances in his context and one of them as i said is that luke 17 one and when we compare luke 17 Compared to the wording in Luke 24, we know Luke 17 is saying, but first for the Noah, meaning before the uh, uh, lightning from one end to the other. But in Matthew 24, it's lightning from one end to the other. And then it's the story of Noah. Because in the end, he's coming as lightning. The whole world is going to see him come in his day. And when they see him come on the clouds, one lightning one end to the other, on his day then the final year will begin and it will represent the year as it was in the days of noah and that year is one year and 10 days long that 14th year of tribulation that 21 year in the big picture that final 49th year in a jubilee cycle, that 49th year, only that 49th year is a year and 10 days long. Are you starting, those that have been around for a bit, is it, are you, are you starting to understand the importance of this? That the Lord is here, we know he's here to represent that final year as it was in the days of Noah, and only in the 49th year, which we know this is the representation of the final Shemitah 49, of the final seven in the Shemitah cycle, only that year, only that year in the cycles of sevens can be a year and 10 days long? I want you to let that sink in. It's represented as one year and 10 days. It's represented in Matthew as the year that the Lord is here, as we have been teaching it for a few years now, that that final year is the seventh year of trumpets, when the Lord is here after the 13 of seals and trumpets, 
He is here fulfilling that year as it was in the days of Noah, which is the picture of the story of Noah representing that final year. And it turns out that the actual fulfillment of that year is a year and 10 days. And it turns out that only that year represented by the 49th, which we have been teaching this is for years, can only happen on that day, in that year. You're going to see what it means because what it means is a confirmation of what we were saying in our own videos. <clears throat> in our own videos. That it must begin at the Feast of Trumpets to start the 14 years. It must start the Feast of Trumpets when the Lord returns in the clouds of Matthew, uh, sorry, of Mark at the end after six years. So the start of the seventh year is the Feast of Trumpets. Matthew chapter 24, he's coming in the clouds at the end of 13 at after six days, after the sixth year, which is the start of the Feast of Trumpets to begin the 14th year for which we know it is a picture of the year of Noah, which is why it is only found in Matthew's discourse, is a year and 10 days long. <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, watch this. Have a listen to this. Day, though, will that jubilee begin? Because that will tell us the end of the 70th week of Daniel. Leviticus tells us that as well. Jubilee. You hear that? He says right off the bat, so this is going to tell us when the jubilee will begin. Okay? He's saying it's going to tell us when the jubilee will begin, which will come at what? The end of the 70th. You see, at the end of the 70th is what? The beginning of the Jubilee. So the, end, the question is, when does a Jubilee year start? Well, the Jubilee year starts at the end of the 49th year of that seventh year of rest, which is the only year that has a year and 10 day count. You see, I didn't want you to get confused with his count of 70 because he does those multiplications of years and with 50 jubilees and everything else. We know what it is. 70 years to be complete over 14 years. And when it's over, jubilee. He, he just said it. He literally just said it. What day, though, will that jubilee begin? Because that will tell us the end of the 70th week of Daniel. Leviticus tells us that as well. Jubilee years begin on a different day than all other years. It starts 10 days later than a regular year. Regular years start on Tishri 1 or Rosh Hashanah. We've been saying that throughout the video, but Jubilee years start on Tishri 10, the Day of Atonement. And that just happens to be a feast of the Lord as well, a Modim. So the final year of Daniel's 70th week, the final year of the tribulation is 10 days longer than you would expect. The tribulation is going to end on Yom Kippur. <laughs> oh my goodness how perfect is that so the reason roy had shared this with me was because in parts throughout the rest of this video he's talking about how feast of trumpets is going to be the beginning of the of the tribulation he just doesn't fully know what year and, and we understand that right we know it's when they change over their years you see it's going to be 5784, and right now, what are we in? We're in 5783. We have understood these things, guys. We've understood it. We know it's going to begin at the Feast of Trumpets. But it's got to end. With what? Well, in Matthew chapter 24, let's go to Matthew 24. In the last video, I shared with you guys as I was just saying earlier, 
that we know that this day and hour that no one knows, right? When the coming of the Son of Man shall appear, this day and hour that no one knows that the coming of the Son of Man, we know this one right here is the Lord himself coming in, uh, sorry, coming on the clouds. Let me just show that for you. For those that had never heard that before or seen it before, because you don't have a, a, dis, a, a, a Strong's Concordance, in Matthew 24, 30, uh, of the earth mourn, they shall see the Son of Man coming in. Look at this word for in. It means on. On the clouds. In Mark and in Matthew, the word for in actually means in. So it, it's like we were showing earlier with the story of uh, the word stayed. And stayed yet seven other days. And stayed yet seven other days. I mean... Don't you think they could have just used the word on? Why did they just use the word on? Why did they have to make it such a mystery for everybody when they knew it was on, yet they called it in? Why did they just call the, he stayed in tribulation, you know, and tribulation started and, you know, yet they used the word stayed and stayed. This is why a program like this called ESORD is the multiplier of your understanding. When you've used the KJV Plus, it gives you all the Strong's Concordance words and you can go deeper and deeper into them. See, it'll have a from word and you can just go deeper and deeper and deeper into these things. It, it, I don't have any piece of the program. I'm not invested, I'm nothing like that. I, I, I've actually supported it too in the past to help them keep going and to strengthen, but I think it's free or a, a few bucks a year. Like, I mean, like a few bucks, four or five bucks or something like that. So everybody should use this thing. Download it on your phone, download it onto your computer, your laptop, your tablet, whatever you can. It's awesome, okay? So you're gonna see things like this that make all the difference in your understanding, okay? But we know this right here. But of that day and hour that no one knows is the Lord right here. The sixth year of trumpets, the 13th year of tribulation, the 20th year has come to an end. And what happens? Daniel 9, 27, he's confirming this covenant to start it. It's, it's, it's the, the, the circumcision and then Jesus showing up. It's the, it's the 20 years and then a covenant with his father-in-law. All of it is this same story of this final year. When does this year begin? It's going to begin in the year 2036 on the Feast of Trumpets. The day and hour no one knows. We know it's the Feast of Trumpets. The day and hour no one knows. We know it. And that will be the year 2036. You see, 2036 is when that's going to begin. Right here, September 22nd, 23rd. Who knows? Maybe it's the 21st. Maybe it's the 24th. However, the, the sun might be at that point with the moon. But the true Feast of Trumpets of September 2036 is when the Lord is going to be seen coming in his day as lightning from one end unto the other. This is when he begins that final year of nobody knows the day or hour but what is it going to be it's going to be as the days of noah were so shall the coming of the son of man be for as it was in those days what do we know happens as the lord is coming feet down on the mount of olives remember what it says one will be taken one will be left one will be taken one will be left what happens when we go to zechariah 14 Zechariah 14 says, look at this, verse 1, behold, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against uh, Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rif uh, rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Half taken, half remain. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. 
We talk about that all the time, right? Verse 4, and his feet shall stand in that day. In that day upon the Mount of Olives. What is that day? That day is the exact same day we've been talking in all of this, taking us back to verse 24. From one end unto the other, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But remember, this day also represents what? This day is the day that he's going to be seen, and it represents his final year, as it was in the days of Noah. The days of Noah, we saw, were represented by one year and ten days, for which we know will begin at the true Feast of Trumpets in 2036, which is a representation of the final year of tribulation, the final 14th year, which is the 49th year of a Shemitah cycle before the 50th Jubilee year begins. Do you know when the 50th Jubilee year begins? Let's go to Leviticus 25 and have a read. There's your Sabbath year, six thou shalt sow, right? The seventh year is rest. Now listen to this. Leviticus 25, verse 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty-nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. Listen to this. On the 10th day of the seventh month in the day of atonement. And what shall you do? And you shall sound the trumpet uh, and, and thou shalt make the trumpet sound throughout all thy land. And thou shalt hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty through all the land, through all the verse 11. A jubilee shall be uh, the fifty that fiftieth year be unto you. Did you see that? He's coming at trumpets. If it starts the fourteen years at trumpets, if it starts the seventh year of seals at trumpets, if it starts the thirteenth year or the end of the thirteenth, the start of the 14th year at trumpets when the Lord comes and will fulfill that final Shemitah year himself. And it is the only year in a 49 year cycle that is one year and 10 days long. And the reference to Matthew chapter 24 is that Jesus's days will be as it was in the days of Noah, which is a direct representation to after he is seen coming in uh, coming on the clouds, then that means when Jesus comes to fulfill that final year, that final year is one year and 10 days long. When does the Jubilee begin, brothers and sisters? When will the Jubilee year begin? Only once every 50 years does it happen where the sound of the trumpet of the Jubilee is shouted, is blasted on the 10th day of Tishri at Yom Kippur, which is exactly what? One year and 10 days from when the Lord began that final 749th year. And only that final seven forty ninth year is one year and ten days long that ends with Yom Kippur and the blast of the trumpet for the Jubilee. And what was the story of Genesis that started in the picture? Not as the big picture overall of tribulation that we were talking about earlier, but what was the picture of it for Matthews? It began after the seven 
days. Remember? This is why I was telling you to remember that. It begins after the seven days right here. How does it begin? It begins on the second month, 20, uh, sorry, second month, 17th day of the month. Don't worry about the day and all that of the month. It's not going to be exact this time because we know it's from trumpets. And when it's, oh man, you got to listen to this. And when this final year starts, which we know is starts on the second month, 17th day, we know at the end, look, look at this, look at this. It's all revealed here in the story of the ark, guys. What happens when the 14 years, that final seven is done? W what does it say? It was what? The second month, 17th day of the month. <coughs> well, hold on a second. When? At the end of the 13 or 20 in the big picture? No. At the end of the 14 or the big picture 21. When is it going to end? When is it finally going to be over? Second month, 27th day. Precisely that 14th year ending and all of it coming to an end on the Day of Atonement one year and 10 days from when it began and check this out when did it begin uh where is it when did it begin second month 17th day right and when it started when it started in genesis 11 7 11 when it started that count for the one year and 10 days when this count started, what did it begin with? 40 days and 40 nights. Which means when the Lord, this is so awesome. For those who have been around for a bit, this is awesome. Check this out. What does this mean? Well, remember I told you that this one is the representation of Luke chapter 2 when he comes the first time? And that I said there's there's another one that is a typology of when he comes in the end. And I've been telling you guys for a long time that I don't say these teachings here because I've been saying for at least three or four years that this is not a picture for us at the beginning. The seven days and after is, and this one here is. This one here with this 40 days when the Lord shut them in. That is part of our big picture story that we have been teaching on and that I was sharing in the beginning. We've been teaching that way for a long time. That is the revelation of the overall big picture and him here for 40 days as the picture of his birth, which we know from Isaiah 9 and all of that is exactly when he will come on the eighth day after the wedding from his birthday, which is two months from his birthday. Exactly from Isaiah 9, as Matthew 4 confirmed. But this, Genesis 7, 11 and 12, even 13, I have never used that to show the big picture because I have always said this is a picture of the Matthew 24 days of Noah. And what am I confirming to you here right now? That not only is it by showing it's a one year and 10 day count that can only happen in the 49th year, which is the 14th year when the Lord is here. And only that year can it be 10 days longer than any other year <clears throat> because atonement starts the Jubilee year with a trumpet blast. Well, it gets better than that. Because remember, I said this 40 days and 40 nights, which is a part of this. When does the 40 days and 40 nights start? Well, in the, in the original story, it's at the beginning of what? The one year and 10 days, right? It starts, the 40 days begins. The 40 days and 40 nights, the reference of the Lord coming feet down on the Mount of Olives to start the 14th year at the Feast of Trumpets in 2036 starts with a 40 days and 40 nights 
where something is being connected to the Lord again for 40 days and 40 nights. But what it isn't is this 40 days. It is not the Luke chapter 17, 40 days. And now you understand why. Because, like I said now, third time, Luke 17 says first. Matthew 24, it's after. Well, guess what? What is this? Second month, 17th day is what? It is a picture of him coming at the beginning of the 14th year of tribulation, at the start of the seventh year of trumpets, at the feast of trumpets, and to start the one year and 10 days that will end at atonement, which will be the beginning of the 50th Jubilee year. And when he comes to start that final year, this one is also going to start with a 40 days. Well, guess what? Remember Luke in order, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4? Remember this? This was the beginning, like the escape. Then you got the picture of, of uh, uh, um, his, his circumcision with John in chapter 1, which is the picture of our the pre-trib escape. And then you got the Lord returning on the eighth day as that picture. You go to chapter 2, we know it's the 40 days of the Son of Man, what? As a picture of when he's coming in the typology of his 40 days related to Isaiah chapter 9, which really isn't his birth, but is two months after his birthday as a grown man. But it is all a picture of the 40 days. Him coming after the escape, after the first attack in northern Israel, after the meteors come down, Luke 21, right, 25 through 28, uh, uh, um, uh, the seven-day wedding, him coming then on the eighth day, represented by the picture of his birth and the 40 days, which is the picture of the 40 days of Luke chapter 17. Well, guess what? Do you know that the picture of the end of seals or the end of the six years of seals when the Lord comes for that seventh year of seals? Do you know there is no 40 days or 40 days and nights being spoken of? <clears throat> Do you know there is no warning for them? Do you know they, they will have seen them come, but they don't know when they're going? That's why it's in the seventh year of seals, and it's about the middle of the year. It's going to be around Passover time. They start coming in at the end of the sixth year, but they're not going to be observed until Passover in the seventh year of seals. Look at, go, go read through this in Luke. No 40 days, no 40 nights wording used anywhere. But it was in Luke 2, which is the picture of the 40 days of the Son of Man before the 14 years begin. And guess where else it is? Remember we said Luke in order, Luke chapter 4, is when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, when he returns on the clouds as lightning from one end to the other? Remember what it said? Who was here? Who was here during the last two and a half years of trumpets? Satan was cast down. The pit was open. Satan was here. The Antichrist came back. The false prophet is there. All the demons out of the pit and everything that comes out. Who got cast down at mid-trumpet? Satan did. Satan is now physically here. And what does he end up saying? In the typology in Luke 4 of the is, Jesus is being tempted for what? 40 days by the devil. Do you realize that Satan's time is the two and a half years of the second half of trumpets? Which means when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives at the Feast of Trumpets, to start that final year and 10 days, for which the ark told us it was a year and 10 days, for which history tells us the 49th year is one year and 10 days, and in and, and Leviticus. When we go to the story of the ark, which is the one connected to Matthew 24 as the representation of that final year and 10 days, what does it start with? 
it also starts with 40 days. And it just so happens that in the Luke in order representation of Luke 4 being a picture of when the Lord returns at trumpets to start that 14th year of tribulation, that final 49th year, it starts with Satan tempting him for 40 days. What do you think the chances are that all of this being in order was just by chance? What do you think the chances are that it's chapter 4 that has his temptation at the end of 40 days and it's by the devil when we know it's the devil who was here for the last two and a half years wreaking the havoc and the abomination and everything else with the Antichrist who came back and with the false prophet? What are the chances that the temple's actually built, which is why it says that he takes them up to the top of the temple, right? Brought them up to the pinnacle of the temple. We, we see in, um, in verse 5, it says, And the devil take him into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. Look at this wording. In a moment of time. That could have been that he was able to see it all in a moment. But he was Jesus. Do you know what I believe this moment of time was? The end. The end in the final moment of time because it is in those last two and a half years that everything has been given over to him. Remember, Messiah cut his covenant. He broke his covenant. They now flew away in the wings of an eagle, those that were protected till the end. It is now hell on earth. Because why? All the kingdoms of the world were given to him in a moment of time. You following? Well, it gets even better. Remember I told you to remember that day? Remember I told you to remember when he comes in his day and how that day will be a year? Check it out. We know Satan then departs from him for a season, of course. What happens? What is the picture at the end of those 40 days? Satan will be bound. Satan is going to get bound for a thousand years. It's the picture of him now being departed for a season. And look at what verse 4 and 5 says. Uh, sorry, uh, Luke 4, 14 and 15. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. How about that? How about that? Do you remember what happens in the end? There's no more preaching of Christ. There's no more preaching. It's only what? Teaching. Right? Because the, the whole world will have seen him now coming from one end to the other. So, so that final year in, in the ark starts with 40 days and 40 nights. This final year picture of Luke 4 starts with the devil tempting him for the 40 days, which is a picture of those 40 days and 40 nights. Satan is gone for a season and time now because he is bound for the thousand years. Jesus is there and everybody is now glorifying and Lord praising him. Well, remember this is all about when he's coming in his day. That also is a picture of the final year beginning. <clears throat> Listen to what it says. In Luke 4, chapter, uh, verse 18 through 20. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight. Listen to that. And the recovering of sight to the blind. Remember, is there a group of people on the earth that were blinded? To set at liberty them that are bruised. Listen to verse 19. This is so important. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What does Luke 20 say? And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the, uh, 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 and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, were fastened unto him. And do you know why? Because in verse 21, 
he says, it says, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Do you know why they were all freaked out? He never read the rest of the verse. He never read the rest of the verse. He closed it and said, today it is fulfilled in your ears. Do you know what the actual picture is in the prophetic end of this revelation? He's here. He's feet down. It's been fulfilled. There's no need for the rest of the verse. What is it called? The acceptable year. But I thought it starts with a day that is a year. Well, how about this? Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen to what he goes on to say here. Oh, well, we don't need the first. Uh, this part is just more confirmation of the year and, uh, and uh, 10 days. <clears throat> but look at what he goes into sharing. I want to show you guys this. I'll show you a couple clips in here. Look at this. Look at this. So Isaiah 34, 8. We're going to go to it in a moment. Isaiah 33, 4, I think that is. And the other one is Isaiah 61, 2. Check this out. Listen to what it says. Okay. We know this one, right? We all know this one. Isaiah 34, verse 8. Let's go to Isaiah 34, verse 8. Remember this day? That's a year. Listen to this. Isaiah 34, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Listen to this. And the year of his recompenses. Remember when he comes? It's going to be his day. But when he comes in that day and he's going to be seen, it's going to start his final year, which is the recompense, which is the giving of the sight to the blind, destroying the enemies. You see, it's the 70th final year, which is the 49th year. What was the other one? Check it out. Isaiah 63, 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Want to see the other one? Check this out. Isaiah 61. This one I got to show you guys so you can clearly see it's directly connected to what? Luke in order. Luke chapter 4. Listen to what it says. Let's start in verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach, the, to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open the prison to them that are bound. Remember Luke 4, hello. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Do you know why he never read the rest? You see? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he never read, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Do you know why he never said the rest? And the day of vengeance, but he only said the acceptable year? Watch this. It's so awesome. Let's go to Luke 4. All directly related to the final year. To preach the acceptable. Luke 4, 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. Why didn't he say the day here? When we know it's a day and it's a year. Do you know why? Do you get it? Do you know why? Watch this. In Luke chapter, in Matthew chapter 24, the representation of that final year starts with him what? Verse 27, Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So how does it start? His day, Luke 17, 24, said he's coming as lightning from one end to the other. Same as Matthew 24, 27. It will be his day. When that day is done, because everyone will have seen him, when does that day start? 
the Feast of Trumpets 2036, whatever that true feast day of trumpets 2036 is that day when he's going to be seen. And then what starts? And then the year starts after that day and hour, no one knows. What is that year starting? The day of Noah, the, uh, the, the year as it was with Noah. So why didn't he say in Luke chapter 4, the picture of his final 14th year, why didn't he say day? Because in Luke chapter 4, they already saw him coming. Because when did he come? Right here. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted by the devil. Do you remember what happened in Genesis? Look what it said in verse in 4.1. It was him coming as lightning first. He's seen coming on the clouds. And then what happens? After he has come on the clouds and he is seen from one end unto the other, what happens? Then it starts his 40 days and 40 nights. In Luke chapter 4, when he's saying that this is now the acceptable year of the Lord in verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the reason he didn't say day is because the day was at the beginning of the year. He has now already been here for those first 40 days of that final year in 10 days. And so what he's telling them is you've already seen me come in my day. Now all that's left is the acceptable year of the Lord for me to complete all of this, to free the captives, to give sight to the blind, to free the prisoners, to, to destroy the enemies, right? Because what was the start of the day of the Lord? We're told in Zechariah 14, behold the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord cometh uh, and thy spoil shall be divided against thee. You see, Here's the spoil, and here he is, coming on feet down on the Mount of Olives, sight to the blind, freeing the captives. And what happens? Destruction to all those that came against them. The last year, brothers and sisters, only in a 49th year of a Jubilee cycle is the final year, a year and 10 days. Let me close it out <clears throat> with this. Listen to what he says. This teaching supports a return of Jesus on the clouds before the end, not at the end. 99% of Christians are arguing about whether that return is at the beginning in a pre-trib rapture or at the end in a post-trib rapture when the correct answer is probably neither. It's not before the 70th week or after the 70th week, but at the beginning of the sabbatical year. About see that? <clears throat> you see what he's understood? He only believes that it's seven years, unfortunately. But what is the church? The whole world is saying, ah, he's coming after the 70th year. Or they say he's coming at the beginning, before the tribulation. What do we know? We know it's the 70th and the 70th. And the church is saying, ah, the pre-trib coming to the 70th. And others are saying, no, he's coming at the end of the 70th, post-trib. <laughs> it's so awesome. But what does he say? He says, it, it, it's really actually probably neither. It is neither. In relation to the 70th as the final Shemitah seventh year of the 49th, when is he coming? at the 70th year to fulfill that final 70th year. This is that final Shemitah, seven years times 10. This one is that final one, which is the 777, seven, seven, the final three sevens, which will culminate at the end with the Jubilee being declared when, you guessed it, on the Day of Atonement, a year and 10 days from when he came to fulfill the seventh year. 
And the only way you can fulfill a year and 10 days in the 49th year of a, of a Shemitah cycle is if you start it at the Feast of Trumpets. And how do you start it at the Feast of Trumpets? There's only one way for it to have started at the Feast of Trumpets so that it could end a year and 10 days later at atonement. And the only way that happens is that the Lord coming on the day and hour that no one knows is the actual Feast of Trumpets in 2036. Feast of Trumpets to begin his final year as the representation of Noah's one year and 10 days. Listen to the rest. About one year prior to the end, most scholars who have invested their lives teaching these other theories have read right past the five witness passages we mentioned. But there is even a sixth aspect of this text that supports this timing. When we spoke of the time Noah was in the ark, which is a picture of the safety of the rapture, it wasn't for a year, it was for one year and 10 days a very precise length of time. Some of you may have noticed that. So you may be wondering about those extra 10 days. After all, Hebraic years are only one year long, right? A year is a year. Well, all but one. The year before a Jubilee is longer. It is 10 days longer, to be exact. A year and 10 days. Hebraic <laughs> secular years run from one Rosh Hashanah to another, in the same way that our Gregorian calendar years run from one New Year's Day to another New Year's Day. This is true for all secular Hebraic years, except the year before a jubilee. That year runs from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, an extra 10 days. <laughs> I had never heard that in my entire life. Only in the 49th year does it go an extra 10 days. And that year means it has to start at the Feast of Trumpets the year before and means to fulfill the final year in Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah, makes it the 49th year where he fulfills the one year and 10 days so that when it's all done, it's at the Jubilee sounding of the trumpet blast. When all the, those that were in the wilderness till the end of the 14 years were over, remember that? when there's that final blast and they could come and they will be restored each their land and everything else that we've been teaching about. They come back for that final Jubilee. Oh man, it's all there guys. It's all there and only, only, there is no, do you realize there is no other 49 year and final jubilee outside of the 14th year from the count that begins this trumpets you add this to the last video proving that the lord coming to start the 14th year has to be at trumpets which we shared in the last video only to find out that now it's supported by the fact that not only must it be based on the revelation of nobody knows the day of hour from Luke, uh, from Mark and from Matthew, but also the fact that the final year, which is represented by that day and hour in Matthew, is represented by the story of Noah, which we have known has the two pictures of an overall big picture and a representation of the final year as a year and 10 days. Do you get it? Do you see the incredible measure of detail and revelation that the Lord has given us through the revelation of the Spirit guiding us? Why this didn't go to the end of 13 and, and start a final year, but actually went to the end of the big picture, 21 years, which means to the end of the 14th year, and at the end of that 14th year, <clears throat> in the big picture, it brought us to the second month, 27th day, which is literally one year 
and 10 days from the start of the final year? The, the, the entire big picture of it culminated in the actual picture of it being the Matthew 24 final year of the tribulation, that 14th year, that seventh year of trumpets, that final 49th year. And it revealed that as it all comes to an end, it actually confirms not only the final year from Matthew as Noah being a year and 10 days, but that in the big picture of this being the final seventh year, it will all end a year and 10 days from when the final year started. Do you understand that type of revelation? Do you, do you realize how, how utterly impossible this all is? Did, did you hear me hiccup and, and say, no, maybe it's this over here or maybe it's that over there? This is off the charts, guys. This is so mind-blowing how intricately detailed and absolute evidence of everything we have been preaching and teaching here since the ministry began and since we started to understand what was happening on September 8th, 2017. This is 100% the revelation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's revelation for the end of days. I don't know how much more clear we could be. I don't know. We, we, got, we, we got the Gospels. We got the discourses. We got the differences. We got the 14 years, the big picture 21, the story of the ark, how it starts in the beginning, how it relates as the end, how it's an overall picture, and how it, when they both come together at the end, they're the exact same day. Ten days later, the beginning of Jubilees, at the sounding of the trumpet on atonement. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That day is right here, maybe off by a day or so, in September of 2037. The trumpet blasting sound of the beginning of the final jubilee when all of those tribes that left and fled on the wings of an eagle into the wilderness will hear that sound to return home. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what else to say. I don't know. What, what more can I share with you? You know, one of the questions that will come from this, and I'm not going to cover it today, I'm going to spend more time on it in some, in, maybe in another video, is does this relate? to the 10 days of Smyrna that they were told they would have tribulation 10 days. I don't quite think so. But we'll talk about that more in another and we'll incorporate some of this because we also know that those 10 days could also be a picture of 10 years, right? Isn't that what we've been talking about through this entire thing? Days being a picture of years, years as days and how they play out in the end. I mean, it is repeated all throughout Scripture. <clears throat> and don't forget, not only is it repeated all throughout Scripture, we know this one so well in relation to Hebrews because the pre-trib bride is like Enoch, right? It's like Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith. It is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. This is the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. And look at what it comes before. The 40 days of the Luke 17, Luke chapter 2, Isaiah 9 picture, the above 14 years, son of man, 40 days as it was in the days of Noah picture that follows after the escape of the Enoch types going to the wedding. And Enoch was what? 365 years old, which is a picture to the Lord God's true 
feast of weeks, which will end 365 years as days, which I believe will be fulfilled right here on July 26th, depending what side of the world you're on, July 26th, 2023, in about 10 days from now. Brothers and sisters, I love you so much. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. I pray for you and your families every night, also in repentance, but we really need to strengthen each other more than ever and ourselves in prayer, in repentance, and in keeping from sin. Get your houses in order. Clean out the sin. Pray and ask for a greater protection of the Lord and His Spirit in you and those heavenly holy angels that are protecting you and your family and defending you to be increased in power, to give you that strength to take you through to the end so that our hearts will not fail us, but we will be strengthened and ready, having been prepared in advance. Brothers and sisters, I am so excited. I am so grateful. I love you all, and we will see you very soon in the third heaven lowest room or girded about when he comes to the banquet for his workers after the wedding. God bless you. Talk to you soon.